and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this video, we're looking at ring etiquette, the things you need to know as you're standing around the ring and if things are happening. What's going on? What are people doing? I'm going to show you when a ring has got a full ring party. This doesn't always happen, but on a show where you've got plenty of ring party, you will find there's lots of people going around. I'm going to show you what that is exactly like so you know precisely what's going on. First things first, you're at a kennel club show and you've got your running orders. The running orders tell you which classes you're in and you'll have a schedule that shows you when those classes are on so you know when you should be around to walk them. If you miss walking a course or running a course, that's your fault and you can't do anything about it. On your running orders, there will be a number. And this is, the, this is the important bit. This is the number you have to remember when you go up to the ring because they, will, they won't know your name. They will ask you for a number because it's easier for them. If they've got 100 odd dogs, it's far easier for them to find dog number 88 than it is to try and find your name because it won't be in alphabetical order or anything like that. So I've come up to the ring with my dog. I'm here, I'm waiting in a queue. This is the ring starting here. There's a scrime tent there where the scrime's gonna be. Judges over there. There's someone gone ahead of me. I am waiting with my dog. So now the booking in person is going to come and they come over because they're, they're going down the line to see who's there. Number? Uh, you're number 88. Okie dokie. Sophie Jackson. That's it, that's it. Excellent. Brilliant. Thanks. Get ready. So I've been booked in. They've gone down their list. They've said there. That tells them that that dog has run. It's a way of them keeping track of how many dogs they might have left to run, who hasn't turned up. Equally, if there's a problem and you can't get to the ring in time, you can go to a ring and say to them, excuse me, I'm going to have to be a little bit late. Can you mark me as late? And they will put that on the board and they won't wait an indefinite time for you, but they will hang on for you. They will know you're coming. So that will be on the booking in sheet. So I've got here, I'm getting to the front of the queue. The next person who's going to come up to me is the ticket person. And they're going to ask me again for my number so that they can find the correct ticket to give to the scribe. Number? Uh, number 88, please. Thank you. Okay, I have been booked in. My ticket has been taken and taken to the scribe or scribe who is sitting over there. And they're the person who's very important in this scenario. You might even say, some people might say, slightly more important than the judge in certain contexts. The judge is obviously the one who's going to decide on what, what I do in the ring but the scribe has the power to let me on and off this course and to kick me off when I've been on the course too long. So the scribe is the very important person. I'm now at this line. My dog is still on a lead. At some point, a person will probably come to take my lead. Occasionally, if there isn't someone to take the leads, you might be asked to take your own lead to the end or put behind the tent. But if this is a full ring party, someone will now come, they'll take my lead. I'll either go to the start line and remove my lead there or I can take it off before I enter the ring. That's up to me. I am now on the start line. My dog is sitting here. The judge is over there. They are ready. I do not start. I look to the scribe, who has now got to double check he's got the right person on the ring by saying, are you ready? And then my name. Are you ready, Sophie Jackson? I am, thank you. That's another double checking factor to make sure they've got the right person. Obviously, if you're going to a show where you know everybody, they may know who you are and it doesn't matter. But they usually say your name, which is on the ticket, to just double check they've got the right person. Doesn't happen often, but every now and again you go and say, oh, hang on, that isn't me. He just didn't say my name, he said... Meryl Street. And you can say, oh, that's not me, that's not me, and no, you've got the wrong ticket. And they go, oh, and that, yeah. Okay, so... He's asked me if I'm ready and I'm there. And I say, yeah, I'm ready. And usually they'll have some sort of thing they say. Depends what who they are. They might say, um, you can go in your own time. They might add, when you're ready, you can go. Or off you go, something like that. But they'll tell you something to let you know that you are able to start. And until they have told you that, you cannot start. Even if you think, well, everything looks good, there could be a reason the scrime is waiting for you. It could be they haven't got the ticket right. It could be there's something on the course they need to sort out. It could be something happening off the course. You don't go until they tell you to. Start when you're ready. Cheers, thank you. And always be polite to your scrime. Tell them thanks. You said thanks to everybody else. You'd always be polite to your scrime. Shut your dog up. Head off. You go. You run round your course. Meanwhile, the scribe is busily 
taking down the details of the judge. So the judge will be looking and they'll be putting the maybe five faults up or a refusal, hopefully not, but you know, you never know. They'll be watching you all around the course. They may have to eliminate you or whatever. As they're going around, the scribe is noting down anything the judge tells them to note down on their ticket so that they have a record of your run. When you finish the course, if it's a clear run or if it has faults, if it's a clear run, the judge will clap and the scribe will note that. He'll note a big C on his ticket to say that was a clear round, no faults. And then he will look at the timing equipment and he will look at it and he will go right that's the time I put it on the ticket and he didn't there. The scribe is also responsible for the timing equipment. So if you start and the timer does not go off, he's responsible or she is responsible for letting you know that. Usually what happens is the scribe gets good. They set you off, they watch their timer and they make sure the timer has started and then they watch the judge and keep track of things that way. Sometimes also the other thing happens and the timer doesn't stop. Again, it's the scribe's responsibility to note that and to then say, halt the course and say, sorry, something's happened with the timing. This has got to be dealt with. We're going to have to restart this person. So they've now got my score. They've put it down there. That's their job done. I'm now getting, for me anyway, I'm now getting off the course. They will make sure I have cleared the course before they start the next person. I always think it's very important to bear that in mind. So many people don't realise this. And to be honest with you, my first kennel club run, I went when there wasn't even a judge in the ring. So, you know, we've all been there. It's very, very important to realize that it's the scribe who's gonna set you off. Keep an eye on them. They're the ones that are gonna tell you and keep you up. And if you, don't, if you don't wait for them to let you go, then, you know, you could be eliminated or something like that, or your run could be scrapped. But that's the primary things to know. You've finished your course. However you've done, maybe it was a disaster, be polite turn around and say thanks judge it could be so i get very good at the habit i just go around and as i'm coming off the course i barely have judge. thanks just to acknowledge that judge for spending their time in the ring and you know they've been it could be there for hours in all weathers and just to acknowledge them and say cheers thanks i appreciate you set this course for me and i appreciate that you've watched me run this even if it was pretty big a disaster no matter or if it's a clear you might be cheering doesn't matter Next, very important thing to do, you get out of that ring and you reward that dog like crazy. Again, doesn't matter if it was a disaster or not. My dogs are always rewarded and praised whether it was the biggest elimination you have ever seen in your life or it was the most beautiful clear. I will admit they can probably tell when it was a really good clear because they go up a notch, but on the whole, they are always praised to keep them confident, to keep them wanting to compete. That's pretty much it for your ring etiquette. There are a couple of other things to bear in mind, such as make sure you don't hang around too close to rings where your dog, so that your dog might set off another dog and upset another dog in the ring. That's not fair, that's not nice. Also give people plenty of space when you're queuing, don't get right up behind them. Again, they could have a dog that's reactive to your dog or your dog could be reactive to them. Give them a bit of space. But other than that, that's pretty much the things you're gonna need to know to get you into that ring and get you started. I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video and if you have, you might, might like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.